Hello and welcome. Today we are talking about Beowulf, which is the Anglo-Saxon poem, and it's the most famous of the Anglo-Saxon poems. So, what does this mean exactly? An Anglo-Saxon, they were the people who lived in England from around the year 700 to 1000 AD, and uh, while they were English, they spoke a version of English known today as Old English, which is so different to our own version of English that we would not be able to understand it, we wouldn't be able to read it even, but it's been translated into modern English by the poet Seamus Heaney. So, the Anglo-Saxons, another thing to know about them is that they were immigrants from Scandinavia, so that's modern day Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, etc. And they had settled in England. Now, the England of Anglo-Saxon times is very different to modern day England. If you've been to England, you know it's a very developed country. There are train lines and roads that connect everywhere. Not so in Anglo-Saxon times. In fact, it was a very sparse place. There were castles and monasteries here and there, but you could go for many days without bumping into another person. There was wide open marshes, swamps, forests, wolves and all kinds of spooky things and so the imagination of that time was filled with these dark and misty and mysterious places and it was believed that many a strange creature lived in these spooky spots of the world so think about that now another thing to remember the anglo-saxon world at the very center of the anglo-saxon world was the mead hall so the Mead Hall was a place in, you know, imagining in this big spooky expanses, there would be these Mead Halls, these large wooden structures where people would come and congregate and they would come together to socialize and to tell and hear stories. They would drink mead and they would listen to these tales. So the story of Beowulf, much like many other ancient stories, was originally a verbal story. It was told out loud. It was kind of performed and dramatized. So those are some of the things that you need to think about when you're reading this story. Also remembering that these Anglo-Saxons who were these who were immigrants from, from Scandinavia, from Denmark and Sweden, um, they are telling stories about their homeland. So while they're living in England and speaking Old English, which has come from uh, these older Scandinavian languages and being adapted slightly and changed they are telling stories about their ancestors their ancestors are heroic in their minds right so this is a way of them forging their identity hanging on to their sense of self in this new world that they that they are living at the same time this is also the first text that we are reading that is in the Christian era so Christianity is now the religion of England and it is also the religion of these Anglo-Saxons who are living there but it wasn't the religion of their ancestors so this text is a kind of fusion now between the old pagan religions of Scandinavia and Christianity so you will notice in the story that there are both uh, pagan image, images and there's also Christianity ideas about Christ and God you will hear those um, discussed throughout this whole story now they, they the way that it's being told as well the tellers of the story and the people who wrote it down for the first time they were Christians but they were sympathetic to the idea that their ancestors had not yet converted to Christianity so they're speaking about their ancestors as if they didn't know necessarily about the Christian religion, but that God was nevertheless pulling the strings in their lives. So think about that when you read it, and that'll help make sense of the way that they describe certain situations and the way that they talk about God. So that's the background to the story. The story itself is about Beowulf. And Beowulf is a, is a kind of typical old-fashioned hero. For the very first story we read, which was the Epic of Gilgamesh, I uploaded a PowerPoint about the hero's journey. The hero's journey very much fits with Beowulf because the hero's journey is about a young person who is called to an adventure and they must leave behind the comfort of the world that they know, go forth out into the strange world 
the special world as it's called there they encounter magical forces and powers things that want to do battle against them and knock them back down they fight these forces and because they fight the forces and they overcome them they become stronger they then return to the world from which they left and they can now bestow boons upon their fellow man that is the original description of what they can do that means they can share the lessons that they've learned they can share the wealth that they've won so that's basically what the hero's journey is beowulf very much fits into this he's a young man he is a geet he is a young king but nobody really knows who he is yet then he hears that there's this monster called grendel who is attacking a mead hall now remember this story was told in the mead halls so you can imagine how that must have felt to the people hearing the story at the time so anyway Beowulf, he hears that there's this monster Grendel attacking a mead hall. He's going to go and help the, this, this Danish king. He takes some men with him. He goes there. He fights. Uh, he wins, but there's more to come. I won't go into all the details because you're going to read it. But suffice to say, he is able to return to his homeland as a kind of a hero. But then the story is different in that it doesn't end right there where the hero's journey would often end simply with the hero returning and being able to share their fortunes with their people instead the story stops and then abruptly picks up again 50 years later when Beowulf is an old man and he has to encounter another challenge and this time he has to fight against a dragon who's been stealing things and gold and silver and jewels and so on from his town and on the battle that he goes with to fight this dragon, he takes a group of followers with him. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens, but I want you to bear in mind the idea that this is a fusion text between old pagan ideas and the modern Christian ideas of this time. And some have argued that Beowulf is kind of a Christ figure and that some of the imagery that happens in the story is meant to um, be a sort of parallel to uh, Christ's life. It's not exactly like that, obviously, as you'll see, but there are certain parallels. Um, so those are some things to think of. Think about the hero's journey. Think about the way in which this text is introducing Christian ideas to a pagan audience. Um, look at... Uh, the characters as well, the way that Beowulf particularly is developed as a character, the way that he is presented as a king. Is he a good king? Is he motivated by the right reasons? Is he in fact honorable even uh, to the point of imitating Christ or is he doing things for the wrong reason? Is he just obsessed with glory and power? Or is the young king different to the old king? And how is the young king different to the old king? These are some of the things you can think about. But again, Take it in whatever direction you want. Uh, bring your own thoughts to the story. Thank you.